Hi, I'm Ali Hassan, Chief Medical and Healthcare Officer at Vitality, and welcome to another episode of Clinically Speaking, our webcast series designed to share with you lots of different facts and relevant information about the care and support that we offer from Vitality to our members. Today, we're delighted to invite Joel from Ascenti, who's the Chief Governance and Quality Officer, who's here today to talk to us a bit more about the musculoskeletal services members require and have been supported by during the pandemic, and about how the future of those services that are available for members may change. We have a new video available every month on the channel, and we hope you enjoy this one and keep watching our future series. Joel, welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Joel, really keen to understand from your perspective, a few things relating to how care is being delivered in this um, unprecedented time that we're in at the moment. Firstly, has delivery of physiotherapy substantially changed as a result of the pandemic? Yes, it has. Um, when the, the first UK lockdown was announced in March, um, along with many other healthcare providers, we closed all of our, our 300 plus clinics across the country overnight. So this meant that in-clinic physiotherapy care wasn't possible for the patients and, uh, and many healthcare businesses had to adapt to these changes. Uh, we already have a, we've been providing a, our suite of digital healthcare solutions to Vitality and your members for, for quite some time now. So we were able to quickly adapt to provide a seamless transition for, for our patients and ensuring that the continuity of care whilst in clinic care wasn't possible. Um, I mean, just as an overview, we, our, our digital services include like triage, uh, video call appointments via a Centi Physio app, and uh, it allows, uh, allows patients to connect directly with a physiotherapist at a time and place that, uh, that's convenient for them. And we, we experienced a, a good uptake of this transition uh, to solely virtual care, which is, a, which is with really positive satisfaction rates. Um, physiotherapy in general, physiotherapy delivered virtually or, or remotely, you know, by telehealth, it, it has a rapidly growing evidence base and it has been gaining acceptance and adoption in different sectors pre-pandemic anyway, but it's been very gradual. At the speed at which virtual physiotherapy being accepted as a, as a viable treatment option for, for musculoskeletal conditions now has, has picked up significant pace. The, the pandemic has led to the, the rapid accelerated adoption of virtual physiotherapy services and, and telehealth services. So, um, I mean, during this time, this situation has provided us a unique opportunity to, to gather data from over 27,000 patients on to prove how effective virtual physiotherapy can be. And we believe that our, our white paper we produce is probably one of the largest uh, study of its kind, if not in the UK, but, but internationally. Fundamentally, I believe what, what it, this has done by moving to sort of virtual sort of remote healthcare services, it, the physiotherapy it's created a real shift in the understanding of what physiotherapy actually is. Um, yet, yes, we provide manual therapy and, and hands-on treatments, but by far the biggest part of what we do is actually is to provide education, is to provide health promotion strategies, create positive behavioural change, and help individuals to drive their own recovery and self-management through for empowerment. So I believe that this modern, this more modern new understanding of, of, of how modern physiotherapy is delivered is, is welcome in, in the development of people's understanding about what physiotherapy actually is. So um, really virtual physiotherapy here is here to stay, I believe, and we'll see many, we'll see it feature in many more kind of healthcare pathways in the, in the coming years. That's excellent, thank you. Can you give us an example Maybe if a story that you've heard about a patient who's benefited um, in a way that they wouldn't have been able to through the use of remote physiotherapy. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, one Vitality member, um, as an example, they were referred to us following carpal tunnel surgery. A, a carpal tunnel release is, is an operation um, to release the soft tissues within the wrist. Uh, this member had experienced complications postoperatively. She was uh, unable to do her work as a, as a care worker. It affected their day-to-day -day activities such as driving, cooking, walking a dog um, and it was also having a, a negative impact on her mental health and she believed that because of the lockdown that she would have to wait to see um, in-clinic care um, but it, you know and delays in accessing care can have quite a negative impact upon a person's recovery uh, and prognosis. So by accessing our service she was able to book a same-day virtual consultation via a video, video call service from our physiotherapists. She was 
feeling better after one session and by providing her reassurance uh, and you know the reassurance that she needed about her recovery and, and outlining what, what steps she needed to take to take control of her, her recovery and, and her pathway. And um, following this, following the one-to-one -one treatment plan, the exercise prescriptions that we provided and the and, and the treatment advice, she was able to return to work. She still utilised the Ascenti Physio app with the exercise prescriptions that we provide. Um, so she returned to work, she reduced her pain, reduced her medication usage, and she was able to get back to her activities of daily living and, and enjoying life again. Um, but this is just sort of one, one example, really, of, of many positive stories that we have. That's a great story, Joel, because it highlights the anxiety that not knowing what to do can cause and about feeling that you can't access care can also give to patients. And also Absolutely. simultaneously highlights the fact that there is a great deal of services available for members remotely um, who are insured with vitality who seek to use the SENTI services. Thank you. With a greater shift to home working, some people have speculated that there's going to be an increased need for physiotherapy services, particularly as posture is challenging to maintain if you're hunched over your kitchen table, for example. Do you see this likely to influence the type of physiotherapy services that people will need in the future? Yes, I mean, you're right. That is one of the big things that we've seen um, around sort of home working um, sort of arise in, in sort of pain and injuries as a result of that. We, we conducted a, a study one month into the into the first lockdown and we found approximately just under 50 percent of people were working from home at the time which it, which is no big surprise um because of the lockdown but many no longer had access to the the same types of office equipment uh that and, and the, the worker setups that they would normally have um in the office uh, our, our study found that some workers were um, some people working from their beds or sofas, kitchens, or even bean bags, um, as one example. And these poor work setups have uh, have seen an increase because of these poor work setups. We've seen an increase in musculoskeletal disorders of neck, shoulders, upper limb, and and lower back. And um, it, it's not just sort of the the home working um, aspects as well that we we're seeing a trend. It's also um, during the during the lockdown, people have taken. Uh, to new forms of exercise, for example, um, things they might not have tried before. So there have been, uh, you know, injuries as re resulting of that for, for joint injuries, that kind of thing. Um, and also some injuries from gardening and DIY, um, which people were doing a lot more of, um, which they hadn't really done before. I think in also sort of looking forward um, as well uh, about the, the changing needs, I think that we're likely to see a different profile of, of presentation of injuries uh, coming through that are going to be more chronic in nature. I do believe that people, uh, a cohort of people, may not have been um, readily accepting or, or, or going to access support uh, for their rehabilitation needs. So I believe we might see a, a trend of growing chronic uh, musculoskeletal disorders um, going forward. But I, I would just encourage anyone who uh, is, is experiencing any physical injuries to uh, seek early intervention because it makes rehabilitation much more straightforward. Um, by leaving it, you it becomes more difficult and, and protracted for uh, for a healthcare professional to assist them. I couldn't agree more. And Joel, I think one thing it's important for our members to know is how easy it is for them to access musculoskeletal help, care, and advice. Our vitality members are able to log into our care hub through Member Zone and very quickly access a range of support for a range of different conditions. If people wish to access physiotherapy or musculoskeletal support, they can go online and they can go straight through and book it easily and effectively and as you said earlier sometimes even on the same day as well joel thank you very much for coming with us and sharing your insights about how physiotherapy and musculoskeletal support will change during the future and also thank you to the advisors for watching this and we hope you'll come back and watch our videos next month too i'm ali hassan chief medical and healthcare officer at vitality and thank you for watching clinically speaking